Welcome everybody to the 2023 Derby City Classic Nine Ball Division. This is round eight. As you see on your screen, we've got a couple of killers at the table. Roberto Gomez has no losses and he faces Mieszko Fortunski, who's got one loss in this tournament. So Mieszko is playing for his life. And I am your host, Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer, bringing you all the action. This video is brought to you in part by Bad Boys Billiard Productions. Thank you guys so much. So this is going to be an interesting match here. As you see on the screen, you couldn't be any more close than these two players. Gomez at a 795 Fargo rate. Mishko at a 796. Therefore, Mishko is a 51% favorite to win this match. It would be interesting to see what happens if these guys played a hundred times. But right now, we're playing one time, and it's a race to nine. And this is going to be a great one to call. Roberto Gomez won the lag. He is to break. And these guys are playing the one. Considering where Roberto's breaking from, watch the one track to the top side pocket. Ooh, and it took a pretty good spin. He did pocket a ball. He's got the one down. Note the cue ball. Very nicely placed. We are playing on four and a quarter inch pockets this year. We are in the last event of the Derby City Classic, so the cloth is worn in. These, these pockets are playing a little less forgiving. And he's overcut this ball by quite some margin here in game number one. Mishko's going to get his first opportunity. I don't know that he's got an aggressive play. But he definitely has a couple of defensive plays. He could utilize the three, chip the two towards the seven. Also utilize the six at the same time. He might have other things in mind. He is a shot maker. So I wouldn't be surprised if he took a cut at the two. Just don't know if that's the right time. Okay. I feel like the snooker was a little tougher to get there. I know he was kind of using an area for the defense, which is the six and seven, but the gap is massive, and he did leave the gap. Roberto probably going to use the six and seven here. That's what he's done. Did he get there? And he did get there. Nicely controlled. I think he wanted to come behind the nine, in all honesty. I will say this ahead of time. This is the only angle I have to work with, but it is better than no angle. But it does fool me at times, so please, please, give me a break if you can. Mishko going to this side, looking at the one rail kick to try and contain some separation. Yeah, and he's going to have to hit just past that side pocket with a low English. Even then, I don't know if you can catch the two full enough. I think that's his concern. Cue ball so close to this bottom rail here or to the rail on our lower screen that he doesn't have a big angle coming into the two. So you've got to catch this two full. Like I've said, if not, that scratch is in play. A lot of things can go wrong. chose to come behind it. I actually like the decision because you're going to get more separation and you can also get lucky and he has. 
but I guess he deserved it, right? Roberto had a pretty good shot on the two that carried position to the three, and he overcooked it. And now he's faced with a kick. Did he get lucky? Well, you've got to love it. Well played, Roberto Gomez. A little fortunate there. I did like the way he hit it. He put a lot of momentum into the two, hoping for a separation or hoping to luck the two in. I think that Mishko's kind of got to do the same thing when the object ball is just out there, no man's land. You've got to hope for separation or lucking it in. And has he gotten away with it? I believe that Roberto can see the lower end of this too. Possibly take a stab at it in the top right corner. Play the cue ball back here like this. I don't believe he did, actually. I think he was trying to pot the deuce. He's kind of a little fortunate that he's left Mieszko over the four. Boy, what a, what a fun player to watch he is. Roberto, obviously, another great player to watch. Mishko's just a loose left-hander with extreme firepower. Is he going to cross this over? Yes, he is. I like the play. Did he get there? Yeah, I really like that play. We could all learn something from that. There was not much future in trying to pot that two ball. He used the six and seven to his advantage and hoped he could knock the two down. Roberto's got a slam or fram into the two again. Well, the, the innings are big early on with this two ball. Mishko is going to shoot here. And it's a game winner if he can knock it down and hold the cue ball. Notice the 4-9. Do you level out and go forward, or do you elevate and punch? Man, he hit that with some pace. Is he going to get away with this? And I really don't care to use that term because at this level, any time you miss, you rarely get away with it fully. But due to the position of the nine, the way these balls ended up, Oh, he played to clip the three, I believe, and if that's what he did, he did a great job at it. This is awkward for Fortunsky. Very awkward. Nice shot by Gomez. I think you've got a one-rail kick at this, unless he's got a good two-rail path. That I think you might be able to get away with this if you can catch the bottom side of that too. Something good could happen. You do have a ball out in the center of the table. The seven ball is a blocker. You could too real kick at it like this as well though. I think it's a big ball going this way. I believe at this point it's gonna be his preference I almost am leaning more towards the two-rail kick now that I look at it more. Oh, he's hit it like as good as you could hit it. Almost. I mean, he's caught, 
He's got the pro side of the ball, got great contact, great separation. And this is no hanger by any means, if he can even make it. This is the only angle I'm working with, as I've stated, but this shot here requires some accuracy. Yeah. Oftentimes, more than not, you'll see a lot of this happen in the first game or two. It can be the jitters, your heart rate, your adrenaline is through the roof. That shot was very difficult, but he did have an angle, noting to where the two ball went and the cue ball went straight. So he did have an angle, missed it by quite some distance. Fortunsky looking to take a one to nothing lead. He just has to fall nicely on the three. Do you come between the three and four or come to this side rail right here? I think the side rail is the safe play. I don't even think there's a good path between the three and four. The nine is makeable from just about anywhere. Just don't want to land on the rail. Seems like that is how it ends up more often than not coming from that angle. He does have some space, so he can get into the cue ball a little. Probably wants to run into the six. The carom is available if the cue ball gets away from him. And yeah, nicely controlled. Fortunsky, also a world-class straight pool player. And he's going to take a one to nothing lead. Barring anything crazy, played it rail first. Well done. And immediately, Fortunsky goes up 9%, winning game number one with the break. This stream is sponsored by Hustling USA, JB Custom Cases. Jerry Olivier Custom Cues and Lipman Lights. Thank you guys so much for your support. I am your host, Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer. Thank you all for joining us. Mishkew, Mish, Mishko. Making sure he can get these balls frozen. Get the best action off the break that he can. And he will also be playing the one towards the side. I was a little bit surprised off of Roberto's break that the one tracked so short. But it looked like it swerved almost. Oh, uh, well, there's the hit right there. He's knocked three down with a great shot on the two. It looks like Fortunsky is up for the challenge. This is almost just a stop shot. The three does lead to the five. The five leads to the seven. This is a dream layout. Yes, nicely done. If he elects to go there, he's going to use a pinch of inside, probably a, a center right cue ball. Float up using the second rail as well. He could come all the way around if he felt like it, if the angle's a little steep. Does the five play in the lower left? Could also come out with an outside English and play the five in the side. Okay, he decide, decided to come all the way around. I can't fault him for that at all. He was able to hit the object ball with a little more pace to ensure pocketing it.
perfect. Yes, and he is such a clean ball pocketer. Quick and loose. Very, very accurate. Quite intimidating to play. Fortunski is going to take game number two rather quickly. This entire event is hosted by these sponsors. Thank you so much to Diamond Billiard Products and Diamond Tables, Ian Simonas and Simonas Cloth, Aramith Billiard Balls, best balls on the planet, Altville AccuRack, AccuStats Video Productions, and Masters Billiard Chalk. Thank you guys so much for your support and putting this tournament on. Well, Mishka would definitely like to emulate that break if he can. Pocketed three balls on the break with a great shot on the blue two. You cannot rack the two on the back here. And as in the WNT or the World Nine Ball Tour and Matchroom, they are racking it in random positions as well. Therefore, you can't play position on another ball very easily. Let's watch the one. Uh, straight in the heart again. Where's the two going? He's got a nice kiss. Does he clear the four? And he has a shot. Cue ball did get away from him a little bit there. I think it caught a couple kisses. This is a little tricky, right? Can he? Does he have enough angle to just punch out above the five, play the four in the lower left? Does the four pass the six? This is where this camera angle is a little tricky. Let's see what he does. Wow. Okay. You think, and it looked to me like he hit that ball good. It, it rattled deep. Had a lot to do with the speed he put on the ball. And that's these pockets I'm talking about. And this cloth. It's worn in a little bit more. It's had a lot of play this week. Gomez has got an opportunity to get on the board in game number three. Nice control on the two, I must say, as well. It's never easy when the ball's hanging. It was out a little bit, but still very nice control. Does he want to carry a two-rail angle on the six to come up behind the nine and seven, or does he want to carry a one-rail angle to just come up above the seven? So he's got the option here to play the one rail up for the seven or the two rail angle out. I think he's electing to play the two rail out, two rail angle out. The only concern about that is that he could get a little steep on the seven and have to come back and forth for the eight. Let's see how he plays this. I could be fooled by the camera angle as well. He'd like to get straight on the seven here, but you don't want to catch the eight. So this is what I was talking about. He's got a little, he's going away from the eight here, I think. Just a little bit. So now you have to power the ball. So I wonder if he could have got a little more straight on that six with the five. Or can he cheat this and just come back? Ooh. Okay, a little movement there, but he killed the ball and went into the nine, which is nice play. Very nice control. He's straight on the eight into the side. These side pockets are snug. Nice hit. Roberto Gomez is going to take game number three, and he needed it. Needs to get something going. Get it. 
Nicely done. And I have mentioned, Mishko has a loss. Roberto has no losses. We are in round eight. So it is getting down to the nitty gritty. Nothing but monsters left in this tournament. This is a tournament every great nine ball and ten ball player wants to win. There is no doubt. And probably one of the toughest tournaments in the world to win, without a doubt. I don't want to quote the exact amount, but I can promise you there was 300 or more players in this event. And you can't really tell me another event that has that many players. Let's see how Gomez hits these. The one track short of the side last time. Will he make an adjustment and catch it a little fuller? It's track short again. Has he lucked the seven in? He did luck the seven in off the cue ball and it carried position. The two could be a problem. Immediately looking below the two. What he's thinking there is if he doesn't get great on it, he could have a defensive play. I think it's probably the safest route if that angle allows him to get down there. He looks quite straight to me, but I could be fooled. You definitely don't want to go towards the 8 and 9, in my opinion. Something real bad could happen. You could catch a snooker. Looks like he's going to power draw this ball. And power draw it, he did. He does not want to catch the five. This could end up perfect. Oof. Almost perfect, but not quite, I don't think. He's got a, got a little angle. Yeah, and he, so he's elected to take second option, which is a great option, right? That's why you want to get below the two. You always have that insurance play, which is the defensive play. Mishko taking no time. Just measuring it out. He's looking at the two rail kick to give it a bigger ball, but I think he's going to elect to go with the one rail kick. Oh, and he's come short. He has come short. Almost caught it on the way back. Another big opportunity for Gomez here in game number four. Looking at any trouble here, I guess it would be from the three to the four. Possibly the four to the five. He's using the rail. Nice. Nicely done. Come straight up now. Center table. He's falling pretty straight, which is okay. I think he wanted to carry a two rail angle going into the five, but this is just as good or better. Yeah, this laid nicely for him. Now he can punch one rail out. Center table again. Or a little straighter. Takes a little control here. Might even elect to go a different route. Yeah, the only reason it took a little control and he decelerated there, it's going to cause some problems. So he didn't want to flirt with the eight. So now he's elevated over the eight, decelerated right at the last minute. Caused the cue ball to slow. This makes the shot about seven or eight times more difficult. Now you really have to put all your focus into pocketing the ball. 
He's looking to see if the eight passes in the lower left. That tells me that the angle is a lot steeper than it looks. Yes. As one poor position shot leads to the next, it can lead to a potential miss, and that is what you have there, and it could prove costly. He hasn't left a direct shot on the six, but Mishko will find something. Can you chip off the six and come three rails, tucking in behind the eight and nine? Risky, because he's gonna leave the six out in open space but very effective if executed. So look at the path that cue ball took. We are not allowed to use jump cues here. I think it's a decent rule. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with so many spectators and people walking around. But I think it's a decent rule overall. Cue ball was tracking to nudge up under the 8 and 9 if he hit it with any more pace. Oh, nicely done. Don't know that he's going to get any love out of it, but he has positioned the 9 in front of the 8. How straight is Mishko here? Does he have the ability to draw it to the short side? Yeah, he's under hit this. He wanted to carry that cue ball, noting where he put his cue. I don't think you can play this combination from this blind angle. I just don't. I think that the angle lays, though, that you can play the cue while behind the nine. Just play the eight to the bottom rail or towards that direction. Does he want to play the eight all the way up and behind the nine that way? I don't know that he sees this shot, but it looks like it lays very natural. Just play the cue ball to the top long rail. Lay the cue ball down towards the Accurac really nudge him up behind the nine he chose to go this route and i think it's going to leave it a shot it has yeah i think that's a pretty big error there at least if you're going to play that shot you want to make sure you get the eight somewhere around the center of the top rail right therefore forcing your opponent to do something to you you don't want to leave it out in the open like this Roberto's a shot maker as well. I look for him to knock this down. And it's not easy. This is also what you would call a blind ball. Does the cue ball go towards the corner? I don't think it's that steep. I think he can level out, and he is. He's hit it pure. And that's what Roberto Gomez does. But he's left himself a little tester on the nine. Heavy favorite to make it. What a good hit that was on the eight. To tie it up. Yes, nicely done. Roberto Gomez ties it up, and we are back to 49% versus 51%. Obviously, that percentage isn't going to change as long as this match is tied up. Roberto Gomez needs to make a little adjustment on the break from what I've noticed. Maybe catch the one a fraction thicker. He's come short a few times now.
And to give you an idea how difficult this tournament is, 527 players in this tournament. So you could easily say this might be the toughest tournament or is the toughest nine ball tournament in the world to win. Okay, he's consistent with that short one ball, but he's also consistent in potting that corner ball. He's got position on the one, and everything lays pretty good here. The four leads to the six. I don't see much trouble. And yeah, going back to the 527 players, sure, you could say, well, there's 200 players in dead money. Sure, there's 200 players in dead money, but there's... 357 that aren't and and there's so many players here that can play what a tough tournament i like it keep the cue ball at a minimal pace or minimal movement stop shot here yes he's staying down well when Roberto stays down well, that delivery is so much better. A little snatchy there. That could cause problems, actually. That backhand was quick and a little snatchy right there in the backstroke. And you can see him emulate his backswing. This could be an issue. He might have to go three rails, actually. Unless he can come back and forth. Uh, this better settle. This better settle. Well, it did settle. Pretty good recovery, but he's not out of the woods yet. Somewhere in the center of the table here. For position. He's knocked it down. Big recovery for Roberto Gomez here in game number five. This seven ball to take the lead. And he's got it down and laid natural for the nine. So just like that, Gomez trailing two games to zero, takes a three game to two lead and breaking. I am your host, Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer, bringing you the action. I hope you guys are enjoying it. I am. Yeah, what a tournament. Huh? What a tournament. 527 players or 557, I can't remember, but I think 527, which is just insane. Um... So like I said, if there's 200 dead players, then there's 327 that can run out. Uh, I don't know where you find a field like that. Of course, there are some condensed tournaments like the U.S. Open and world titles and things like that that are obviously powerhouse packed. But boy, I think anybody would take the W in the Derby City Classic 9-ball. Okay, so this is starting to tell me that he might not even be playing the 1, right? Looks like he's playing position on the 1. He obviously didn't quite get there, but he's getting that corner ball to drop every time. It's going straight in. When you know you can do that, then you don't want to pocket the one. And once I get a chance to watch that after three solid breaks, you begin to believe that this is how he's playing it. Is he going to go for the bank here and draw down? 
Oh, he's got it in, too. Did he catch the nine correctly? He did. Boy, this has opened up. The only work that I see is from the two to the three. Somewhere below that top side pocket, somewhere on that line, if he can. Just like so. You can sense that he's starting to get a nice flow to him. And he is very tough to beat when he gets into this position. Nicely done. Not a lot of trouble here. The nine is low. He elected to come two rails out. Utilizing those rails. He's going to the side pocket. He's hit it clean. Now he can come one rail out, carry the angle, or stop. Wants it to settle. He doesn't want to get mid or 50-50, but he does have the angle. Just like that, game number six. He's laid perfect. And game number six, Roberto Gomez takes it with a four to two lead, trailing two to nothing in the beginning. Wow. Let's take another look at this bank. It wiped its feet, but you had to hit it good in order to get it down. These pockets do not give. It's nicely done. He got a friendly bump on the nine. Okay, this is interesting. This is interesting. You know, I think Mishko's concern is that typically at this level, the corner ball shouldn't be going straight in. We're racking the nine on the spot, right? So Mishko's noticed the same thing I've noticed. Now, I'm not saying it shouldn't be going straight in, but I think that that's what Mishko is thinking. Now, every table racks different or plays different, and that's the truth, even with the Accurac. But Mishko might be saying that he's racking them a hair low. There's our great friend Bill Stock from Arizona. So, that is what Mishko is talking about. He's, he's bringing up the fact that the balls could be racked a fraction low. I don't see it too often, but the corner ball does play a lot of times. I don't see it a lot. It's going straight in here. Doesn't mean Roberto's doing anything. It just could be the way these balls are racking. They do have marks on the table. I know we can't see them. And I know this camera angles off, but that one looks low to me. And if that's where the nine is supposed to be, that looks low. It really does look a little low. Well, Roberto's going to argue the case, right? If, especially if that's where the mark is supposed to be or where the mark is. This is round eight, looking to go into round nine. Roberto doesn't have any losses. And now if, if he was forced to move this up a fraction, these balls will rack completely different. So it will be interesting to see where this seven ball tracks. I have a feeling it's tracking towards the corner again obviously I'll bet you Bill Stock didn't go too far straight in the guts 
the seven plays. Position on the one. And you can understand Fortunsky's frustration, but I don't know that it's at the fault of Roberto Gomez. He's got the one six combination. The concern here is the one is going away from the pocket. So he's going to have to play some type of position. Does he go forward? Yeah, I felt like going forward could have been the play there. You know it's going to go into the back of the five. So I think he tried to catch the six a little thinner. Does have a pretty good bank here, though. Play this in the lower right corner. Just spin out one rail, touch of left. You really don't want to play this to the short side, but if you do miss it, that's the correct side to miss it on. He's drawing it. He likes to draw just about everything he shoots at. Yeah, he's hit it nice. He's got the top side of the pocket. Roberto Gomez off to the races again. Game number seven. Very, very nicely controlled. Perfectly in line for the four. Carrying an angle. Almost too much angle because you want to have an angle on where the line is right now for the five. He was aware of that. Maybe a little light. Now he's going to have to level out. Utilize the left-hand spin on this cue ball. Well, he's drawn it again. Berto Gomez looking smooth. He is going to take game number seven, and he is going to lead five games to two. And initially starting out this match, trailing two games to zero. So it will be interesting to see if Mishko has anything to say about this going forward. We are talking about a game of millimeters, right? And not even millimeters at times. <laughs> so if these markings are off just a hair, there you can see, it's very hard to see the marks. They use a, a white pencil. It's very hard to see the marks. But if they are off just a fraction, or just a little low. That could be the result of this corner ball rifling in. But I have seen it before, right? It's not, This isn't an absolute anomaly. I have seen it before. A lot of tables will break like this. But this seems to be something Roberto knew going in the way he was breaking the balls. Well, there the two went high. Got a little kiss and luck on the six. So he either racked those incorrectly or poorly, racked himself, or he mishit them because two and five are glued together as well. Mishko finally going to get an opportunity at the table. I have a feeling he could be rested behind the purple four unless Roberto decides to go the other direction. Which is this way. He could play the cue ball and chip the one. Maybe play the cue ball down behind the seven and use the three as well. 
might be better because you're creating distance and the cue ball is going away from the two ball breakout well he's boy he's he's I think he's tried a little too much there he tried to rest him up underneath the two and nine I think you're doing a little much there wasn't necessary we're not using jump cues not allowed in this tournament as I've said He's got a little fortunate, leaving Mishko pretty much dead straight. Well, that's pretty good from where he was, believe it or not. That is pretty good just to get a peek at the blue two. Can utilize the five here as a blocker. Do you come up behind the three or all the way down? Well, it needs to carry. I think it stopped just in time for Gomez. Mishko's not going to be thrilled with that. There's no doubt Gomez can see a piece of this, too. Once again, utilizing another ball on the table to control the cue ball. Very, very slippery. I love the play. He did this earlier in the match. Can almost sense some frustration from Mishko. He's not that type of player. Needs something good to happen here. Well, something good did happen, and Mishko is going to take game number eight, trailing five games to three. Can we get another look at this? He played this rail first, and then the two went rail first. And made the nine. Just like so. That's a great replay. And I guarantee you, Mishko was happy about it. So the question remains. And notice Mishko moving the two. You're not allowed to mat rack the two on the back. The question remains. Does Mishko try and emulate what Roberto is doing? I think you almost have to. I would be surprised if he doesn't go to this left side now. He was at the right side prior. He's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. He's going to do it. You can't blame him. Let's see what happens. You just don't want to overhit them. Well, there's... Two completely different hits in that break. Roberto, if you'll notice, Roberto breaking those balls a lot more square and a little less pace. Levy's going to have to push here. Due to the positioning of the one out and outer space, he's definitely not going to kick at that. Let's go quickly to the table looking to see if the one passes by the eight. I believe it does, but getting to the two is another question. Got to contend with the four, the six, the eight. Yeah, you might want to think about this one. At least as far as being aggressive. Is there a defensive play here that guarantees the hook? You probably don't want to pass this up, but do you want to shoot at it? 
I like this play. I think it's a very good play, very good decision. Like to have gotten a little bit more out of the cue ball coming up behind the four, maybe, or a little more out of the one. Roberto can get to the bottom side of this one. He's got to swerve a little. Go to the rail first. Oh, he's missed the entire ball. This is what we love about pool. Some drama early with the rack. Gomez was leading five games to two. Mishko pockets the nine with a kick last game and now has ball in hand in game number nine. Does he look to play the one three rails and stick him on the seven? Position on the two is unlikely. I believe this is why he's going to go this route. All cue ball here. Oh, yeah. Needs that one to carry. Like to have gotten a little more out of that one, but if he's cut Roberto off from the side rail, the top side rail, then he'll be satisfied. But looks to me that there's a gap there. Is he looking to jump the edge of the seven? Well, if he can get to there, then he's definitely got a chance at hitting the one. Oh, he's come long of the one, and Mishko's going to have ball in hand. He did jump the edge of the seven there. All for naught. Got some work to do. The three to the four. Seven's laying a little difficult. Doesn't seem satisfied with that angle. I think he's okay. He can draw back in front of the nine and carry the angle to get him to the four. If he wanted, he might be able to go forward. I don't see any reason there. Draw it back about four inches. Just get in front of that nine. He's going forward. Oh, geez, I apologize. He's stopping. Playing the gap. Nicely done. Very nicely done. He can make it look very easy, in my opinion. His delivery is just so natural. Fun, fun player to watch play, especially in person. He's making light work out of this rack. I believe he's got the correct angle. Yeah, it's okay. He'll be all right. A little steeper than he wanted. Looks like Mishko is going to take game number nine and climb within one of this match. That's what he's done. So those percentages changing. I find it interesting. 63 to 37 in percentages, right? 
only one game difference. But obviously that's calculated in a race to nine. I think Mishko trying to figure this rack out. You can emulate another player's break, but if you're not contacting the one exactly like they are with the proper speed, nothing's going to come out like what they are doing. So in my opinion, if it if it were me, I think I would go back to what I know best, if I'm Mishko. You were doing just fine. You had success at potting the one in the side. I would continue with that. I bet he does with the result after that last rack. Inspecting the balls. And believe me, there's gaps. There can be gaps, unintentional gaps. It's very, very difficult to get everything to rack perfectly. He is going back to his original break. He's missed the one. So he's kind of lost the plot, as they would say, as far as the break is concerned. You've got to wonder, did he allow what Gomez is doing with the break to get in his head a little bit? I feel like he's mishitting it. He's caught those a hair thin. Or you've got to wonder if, if you get that negative thought in your mind, just a fraction of it, that maybe they're a little low. Now is he mishitting the one from that? That being said, Gomez has an opportunity to take a two-game lead again. This is not easy. I think he's best going forward, but I can't tell. He might have an angle steep enough to where he can punch between the 8-3 or just above the 8. He might have an angle to where he likes to draw the ball back and play the three in the side. The natural path to me looks to be forward. Tougher to pocket the ball that way sometimes, though. with the low again so is he trying to find the gap between the seven and five or is he trying to below draw below the six big shot here well, he definitely lifted up I know that's the end result of the cue ball, but I don't believe that's where he was trying to get. Obviously not trying to run into the three. I think he was trying to find the gap between the five and seven. I believe that ball might have skid on him just a little bit. He used some inside English. He did shoot it quickly, neither here nor there. Fortunsky's at the table looking to tie this match up at five games apiece in game number 10. We have a match. And everything for the taking right now if you're Fortunsky. The only thing you need to do is figure out how to make a ball on the break. You know, going back to the five that Roberto missed. Put quite a bit of English on it. He hit it easy. Could have been a little dirt on the ball. It could have skid, or he could have just caught it a little thick, right? Notice how tight those pockets are. That ball held up. 
Very smooth player, this guy. I am obviously a fan. Berto Gomez is a good friend of mine, a fan of his game as well. But right here, right now, Mishko Fortunski about to tie this match up at five apiece, and he has. So if you're Mishko, what adjustments do you make breaking these balls? Do you go back to Roberto, the way he's breaking them, or do you stick with what got you there? I think you stick with what got you there. He had success early on, potting the one in the side. That's why I'm wondering if it's got to him a little bit, got in his head a little bit. Let's see if he can get back on track. Pretty interesting stat, right? So I thought or mentioned early on if they're tied up, Mishko's going to be a 1% favorite. Well, that is no longer. It's 50 50. And I can see why. So Mishko going back to Roberto's spot. And no, Roberto doesn't own that spot, but it is where he is breaking from. Oh boy, disaster. Strikes in game number 11. He needs something to tie up. And he's gotten it. The two is actually tough as well. The four does not play. This is not the result Fortunsky is looking for. Does Gomez utilize that wall of balls now? Is that what he is thinking about? He's got a big decision to make here. You can do this now, but are you going to rearrange the balls, the four, five, or eight? I don't know what it gets you if you don't. Yeah, so he moved the four, but not into anything any better, in my opinion. As a matter of fact, it could be in a worse position for Roberto. And the difference is now Mishko has a shot at the table, right? He can two-rail kick at this one, possibly. So I don't know that that was the right decision. I'm not at the table. But I don't see any benefit playing that shot unless you can move the position of the four or the five. Given ball in hand away, your opponent now is at the table and the four is in the same position, pretty much. Oh, well, proving me incorrectly, Mishko a fraction from making a good hit there and possibly getting some type of a safety out of it or making the one. Now Roberto faced with the same issue he was faced with prior. Does he make the same mistake? I highly doubt it. It's not what champions do. I wouldn't be uh, too concerned about the two fouls, but Mishko is on two. He did scratch on the break. Do you go at the snooker now or play the snooker on the four? I believe the four is a probably a little higher percentage snooker play. Or do you find something now? And that's why he's taking this time. This 
as I look at the table, I guess you could maybe get him behind the six and play the one up above the two and nine. But I don't see a real cinch up safety. I do with the four. But I think you've got to play this ball. And he is. There's just nothing close to the one to where you can utilize that two fouls. He's fine there. He's just going to come one rail out. Probably going to carry an angle on this three. Could get a breakout angle. Well, it was steeper than it looked on the screen. Does have the angle. Now is where he's got to make the decision. And he looks like he already has made that decision. He wants to get low. The low angle is where he can just stop his ball, glue him or weld him to the eight. Well, he's gotten a little snatchy with it. He was quick. He was really quick in that final motion. And that is not ideal. I don't believe the four goes. And now he's in a little bit of a pickle. He's got good speed on that cue ball. It's frozen. Yeah, this is tricky here. I think he's got to play the four to the bottom rail here and maybe towards the six and use the eight to just stop the cue ball. But a weld or a safety, a solid safety, is out of the question. So you go back to the three and trying to come all the way down. Was that the right play or do you just come in front of the four? That's what I was thinking he might do all along. Ortunski getting his extension. Probably needs the bridge as well. Left-handed. This is in a really tough position for the left-hander. Yeah, he is stretched. Look at that bridge. It's about a three and a half foot bridge. Nothing major. Maybe a four foot bridge. Uh, he's hit it well. Really nice shot. He doesn't want to get straight, but he'll take it. He's going to have to power draw this ball. Regrouping. Big opportunity. He has not led this match since the second game. He was leading two games to zero. Excuse me, since the fourth game. Berto tied it up. Is he going forward? Okay, he was able to cheat this a fraction with inside. He does not want to get straight. He's got work left to do.
Yeah, he's falling flat on this ball. Oh, and it's caused a miss. An unexpected miss. Nice rub on the cue ball from the seven. Makes things a little bit more difficult for Gomez. So a few blunders here in game number 11. Who wants it worse? Or who wants it more? Difficult shot here. He's got to draw out of this lower left side. Cannot go forward. I guess he could go forward, but he's got to contend with the eight. Is he looking to play this in the lower left? Wow. Yeah, I thought that that might be even tougher going to the lower left, but he was concerned about the cue ball getting position or getting anything decent on the seven. I can't fault him for playing it, but he caught it very thick. And a big break for Fortunski, or should I say a fortunate break for Fortunski in game number 11. And I believe he's fallen straight here as well. He will be okay. Yeah, so he has fallen straight. You could say that's a little lazy, right? He almost had ball in hand on the six. He had to cheat it there with a little... He got the most out of it, is what I can say. He's gotten the most out of that. And now it looks almost as if he's fallen straight again. I believe he has a slight angle here. He's fine. Yes, very pure. It's that cue ball off the rail a little. Bridge could be awkward. And it is awkward. He'll smooth this in, I believe, and take it his first lead in quite a while and he's done that six games to five after 11 games Fortunski leads and now he is a 66 percent favorite I am your host Scott Frost aka the freezer I hope you guys are enjoying this can he figure out the break he's done nothing on the break in quite a while. That's where he had success early on. He did go back to that spot mid-match and failed. Let's see if he adjusts. Well, really quick again. Really quick again, right before he pulled the trigger. I feel like his timing looks to be off a little bit, whereas it was on in the beginning of this match just looks like his timing is off. Roberto's definitely got a shot here. He hits this ball well. Do you just go into the five and take what you can get or do you kill it and hold it? It's pretty thin, unless it's fooled me. Yeah, so he caught a piece of the five that's what I was talking about because the two does play in the side. Do you just go into the five heavy and take what you get? I don't know if that's better than what he's got now or not. Just looking to play the two in the side. Now 
I think he's gone to the carom. Yes, he's gone to the carom. Look at this shot. Really nice shot. Very aware of where the two was going at all times. He's going to have to elevate a little here. But she, he should be home free. Gets on this three. I know it's hanging, but he's got to get to the lower half of the table. Yeah, very well done. So Fortunsky is failing on the break. Not much success as of late. Could this prove to be the decider in this match? Typically in rotation games, the guy who's breaking best walk away with the W. He's picked up the pace as well. Come two rails out, or one rail? One rail. Needs it to settle. A little far. Just a little far. That's kind of why I was wondering if he just drew it out two rails nice and tight coming into the angle. He can hold this. Just going to have to hit it easy with a kill stroke. I am a little bit surprised at how he played this ball. He's not supposed to miss it regardless, but he tried to pinch to the short side of the eight or to blow the eight. I believe he split his focus there. He just missed the six. What an opportunity for Mishko it is. I thought that he would just kill that ball and play the eight in the lower right corner, just play it up. He likes to use low English, and I believe it got him in trouble there. Nicely stroked. Mishko's going to take a two-game lead here off a big error from Roberto Gomez. Roberto would like to have that back. We all know it. Yeah, pretty big error there. He did get a little steep on the six, right? That's why I was considering maybe coming two rails into that angle. He definitely had that option available. Do us a favor, like and subscribe, hit that notification bell. Railbirds TV bringing you all the best content for free. Thank you so much. It's the least we can do. Appreciate it. Now you can almost feel like he's going to pocket a ball on the break, right? You kind of get loose and free. Do you make good contact here? Pocket a ball on the break and really punish your opponent. And he's done that. Does he get position? It doesn't look like it. Pretty interesting spread, to be honest with you. And the six rocked late off the Accurac. Seven balls and a cluster down low. The eight up here all alone. Does he have the gap? between the seven and nine. Boy. Dangerous, in my opinion. But where do you push out? Do you push out to the gap between the five and seven down here somewhere? And that's what he's looking at. Problem is, I think there's a real easy defensive play if you do that. Roberto can just roll the two up behind the four and play the cue ball behind the five, seven, six. So he's kind of got a decision to make here. 
sometimes when you have a gap like this it's almost like an aim point right if you can see enough of the two it's like a guide sometimes the shot becomes easier the only concern well there's several concerns but where's the cue ball looks like he has already made that decision and he will push him looking to go there to leave some type of a kick safe I don't know it's hard to do that especially with the two being off the rail so much. Looking at the kick safe there as well. He brings the cue down lower. He's looking at the gap. He's afraid of the easy, safe return from Gomez. He's not thrilled with putting it there. I promise you. I think it's all he has. And he was afraid to try and freeze it to the rail. If he overhits it, he could scratch. He gets a little bit of an error, though, leaving that cue ball so far off of the rail. Roberto can really get into it however he'd like. I don't see Gomez passing this up. Oh, he's caught the six. He's caught the six. The ball that haunted him last game. Did the table drift? Or was it much tighter than we thought? Probably the later of the two. And there's a Robert, Roberto still affected by that miss last game. To tie the match up. What a big game that was. Tunsky's got some work to do here. Does he have the angle to come around and miss the five? I believe he does. Yes, he does. The six plays in the same corner as the five. The six nine combination isn't terrible. These guys typically want to run out. Needs that to settle. If he can miss the seven here, he should be fine. Did he get too steep? I don't think so. I think he can come out two rails. Oh, he had to kill it with some inside, so he was steeper than it looked. If he would have put right English on that, it would have swerved the cue ball towards the seven. So he put left on it to straighten it out. Yeah, very pure. He likes to get straight. That's one thing I've noticed. He might not be straight here. He might be able to go forward if he'd like to the lower side of the table with the cue ball. It's all preference here and how you feel. He is going to go forward and wrap the cue ball two rails. Wrapping. Did he fall straight again? Negative. Now he can punch out two rails. Somewhere towards the center of the table would be ideal in this position, or maybe even one rail. Get two rails out. He got more out of it than I thought he could. What a big turn of events here. 
Mishko Fortunski is going to take a three-game lead after 13 games. Roberto Gomez is going to be haunted by that six ball for a long time to come. And Fortunski was successful with the one in the side last game. So everything changes, right? Those negative thoughts tend to fade away and everything is roses. Gomez, a 6% dog to win this match. I once again disagree with that. He only needs four games for these guys at this level. That is uh, nothing out of the ordinary to come back and win. He switched sides, or is this the same side he broke last time? Well, he is at the same side because he potted the one in the same side and he has a shot on the two and this could be all she wrote if he can get on the four these balls lay sweet he's not thrilled with it but I, I certainly wouldn't be uh, unhappy looking for the gap Two rails around between the eight and five. I think that's okay, right? Come above the six to below the nine. You just don't want to let up on this. It's easy to let up. The cue ball takes a different path than you have in mind. Could you kill it and take the long cut? Possibly. I like coming around, unless that eight is a bigger ball than I think. Okay, so he's elected to take the cut. Probably a lot less risk involved there. He knows he's going to get a shot. This is all he really has to knock down in order to seal the deal here. Gets to the five, this match is over. It's coming off hot. Did he play it to the side? Let's hope that cue ball came off smoking. But it turned out real nice, and I got it that that's how he played it. Fortunski four balls away from advancing into round nine and giving Gomez his first loss of the tournament. He's definitely taking time here. Wants to be on the right side of this seven or the correct side. Okay, he was a little flatter on the six than I thought, and that's why, but he is laying good here. Very, very smooth player. looking to get into round nine he does have a loss but he's going to dish one out to Gomez as well and it's been a pleasure calling this match for everybody I hope you guys have a great night congratulations to Mishko Fortunski with a 9-5 to five win over Roberto Gomez good luck to both of these guys thank you all have a good night